everybody knows the Starix is a household name in the Philippine market and Hyundai is building on it with the Staria. But can Hyundai achieve the same success in the MPV class? Hi everyone, Jamil here from Auto Industria and this is the 2023 Hyundai Stargazer. There are a lot of established MPV contenders out there and the Stargazer may very well be considered as the latecomer in its class. That being the case, Hyundai has a lot to prove with the Stargazer. They need to offer a unique proposition for them to stand out. With that being said, the Stargazer, I think, has done the job when it comes to the exterior. Yes, I know the front looks a lot like the Staria, but the rest of the body is totally distinct. As you can see, there are very sharp character lines. Those 16-inch wheels blend in really well on the design, and you have those huge LED taillights at the back that forms a big H light signature. From a size standpoint, the Stargazer is not the biggest in the segment when it comes to overall length, but it's one of the widest compact MPVs out there. And the thing I really like is the thought process involved in packaging the Stargazer. If you look at it from this angle, Hyundai incorporated an extreme cab forward design on the Stargazer. And as you can see, the hood is very short and the A-pillar already extends from here to there. One of the things you'll also notice is that the front and rear wheels have been pushed forward. So it has short overhangs. And it also allows you to free up more space in the cabin without extending the vehicle size. Now, as you can see, with all the seven seats up, you have about 40 inches wide of cargo space. And you also have this additional cargo hold right here where you can place your extra shoes, your tools, or anything else that you can put in here. And if you need more cargo space, just fold these third row seats. And you have 43 inches of length from here to there. So if you still need more space, you can fold the second row seats and you have about 70 inches of length. Now let's check out what's powering the Stargazer. What we have here is a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine that puts out 115 PS and 144 newton meters of torque. And it is paired to an IVT. Essentially, this is Hyundai's version of a CVT. Now, going back to the engine, this one makes a bit more power and a bit more torque than, let's say, the Expander or the Avanza. But this one is not the class leading because that one belongs to Honda with a BRV. As you can see, the engine itself is pretty bare. No plastic engine covers whatsoever. But the thing I like here is that Hyundai decided to paint match these panels right here to the body color. Unlike most manufacturers who leave that one in bare primer. Well, just to save on cost. But the engine itself is very much like its other competitors. You have the intake manifold in front, the air intake at the right, and the exhaust manifold at the back. The engine itself is also running on a chain-driven system. So you don't have to worry about replacing your timing belts every 100,000 or so kilometers. So it gives you less worries in the long run. Now we're here inside the Stargazer, and quickly, you'll notice there's a night and day difference. On the outside, the Stargazer is really stylish, but inside, it's all about function. And by the way, this is the top-of-the-line GLS Premium, so you have leatherette seats on the first to the third row. We have the steering wheel right here, which is big, and it's wrapped in artificial leather. You have the buttons here for your audio system. On the right, you also have these uh, controls for the ADAS systems. You have the lane keep assist right here, the cruise control, and the button for the multi-information display, which shows the fuel consumption, uh, tire pressure monitoring, and other vehicle settings. The instrument cluster has a full digital display, and it's got a nice resolution. It's not the most crisp out there, but it's all well and good. 
actually, you can even change the color of the instrument cluster depending on the driving mode that you're in. So right now, we're at the normal mode, which is colored in blue. Once we shift that one to sport mode, it turns into red. or It's kind of pink, actually. And then, once you go into echo, it turns into aqua. We have an 8-inch touchscreen system here, which I really like because Hyundai fitted this one with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's very convenient to use because you can use your navigational apps like Google Maps or Waze. One more thing about the touchscreen system is that it has a rear view camera. So it can be activated when you go into reverse. There you go. And it works with the rear parking sensors. There was a problem though with the Android Auto system when I was connected through a wire. But could be more of a wire connectivity issue since I didn't have those problems when I was using wireless Android Auto. Now below these vents, you have this storage tray where you can put your wallet your cards and all that sort of stuff as well as this hidden storage compartment right here now below it are the knobs for the AC system though I find the size of the knobs a bit small maybe they should have made these bigger and in equal sizes but when it comes to the AC system itself there are no problems in fact it's really strong so it gets very cold inside the stargazer which is great especially that summer season is coming it has a space here for wireless charging, a USB port, and a 12-volt power outlet. There's a nice silver accent surrounding the shifter here with blue lighting. That turns to red when you shift to reverse. Hyundai did not put an electronic parking brake and an auto brake hold. So what we have here is a mechanical parking brake beside these two cup holders. Now, if you like grande or venti-sized cups, it's best to leave this cover right here. But for smaller drinks, you can actually remove this one. As much as I like the Stargazer for being well equipped in terms of features, I believe Hyundai could have done a better job designing this part right here. I know Hyundai is going towards a dual screen layout which we see on a lot of their more upscale models. But if it was in my opinion, this would have looked better if this one was finished in piano black. Because of this panel right here, you're practically forced to sit higher just to see the front clearly. And one more thing, I do wish the Hyundai Stargazer had front parking sensors. Because the hood is sloping, you can't actually see the front end. So having a front parking sensor would have made more sense in parking through tight spaces and doing parallel parking. Here at the second row is where the cab forward design really pays off. You see, I'm about 5 foot 9. And when I move these seats forward, I still have enough legroom to sit comfortably. You have a big cup holder right here and another feed down below. Here at the center, you have an armrest. Below, you have two USB charging ports and a storage pocket for your phones. Now, at the back of the front passenger, you have this tray table right here, which you can use in case you like to eat while traveling. The third row is not the best place to be in if you're as tall as me. And as you can see right here, my knees are already hitting these second row seats. Now, on short trips, it may not be much of a problem. But on longer ones, the third row may be better reserved for kids. Other features you can see here are these two cup holders and the space for your phone and a 12 volt power outlet. But that's about it here at the third row with the Stargazer. This is actually not the first time I've driven the Stargazer since before it was launched, Hyundai invited us for a pre-launch test drive on this one. But it's the first time for me to actually test the Stargazer in different driving conditions. And I must say, I'm really impressed with how frugal it is when it comes to fuel efficiency. Uh, right now, I've already spent 
about a week with the Stargazer and I've covered around 350 kilometers already and it says here on the gas gauge I still have about half a tank left that's around 280 kilometers so yeah it's really fuel efficient I've driven it on the highway I've driven it on the expressways and here in the city and I was averaging around 13.6 kilometers per liter I was even doing around 21 kilometers per liter when I was cruising along SLEX with the cruise control on. Speaking of which, you do have to be a bit careful when you're using the lane keep assist when you're going through expressways because it has a tendency to turn off, especially at Skyway Stage 3. Now to be fair, Skyway Stage 3 is like the sections in the Tokyo Expressway or Wangan which has a lot of curves so it's not really straight unlike the ones on SC Tex or TP Lex so I think the lane keep assist would work better in that area now since the Stargazer has one of the longest wheelbases in its category it also works to its favor when it comes to riding comfort because with the long wheelbase you get to have the body have more time in settling down and absorbing those road imperfections so yes the stargazer is comfortable even right now we're at edsa and there's not much road noise at least within the speed limits now in terms of its powertrain, the 1.5 liter engine of the Stargazer has adequate power. Because when I tested it with 5 adults plus our camera gear at the back, the Stargazer did not really feel sluggish. Of course, it's not built for speed and actually the sport mode only rise, raises up the RPMs and it doesn't really do much to help the stargazer accelerate so it's best reserved when you're for example going downhill in mountain passes that's where the sport mode works better but actually right now i'm in normal mode and i don't have any problems with the stargazer picking up speed actually it picks up speed pretty good what i've noticed though is that hyundai could have used better soundproofing when it comes to the windows they could have used the thicker glass because there were times that I thought the windows were open since the loud exhaust from the motorcycles and trucks have a tendency to creep in inside the cabin. I don't know if you could hear it but the rear plates are rattling in the Stargazer. So if you guys plan to buy a Stargazer, take my word of advice, buy a rear plate cover or a plastic plate holder so it would stop rattling but other than that the stargazer does most of its job well and i think that's what seven seater mpvs are here for it's to make your everyday drive very easy very convenient and take you and your family from point a to point b without a hitch Now let's talk about the price. At 1.258 million, the Stargazer GLS Premium already comes with intelligent features. It drives well, it's very economical, and despite the minor issues like say for example the dashboard design, Hyundai is already making a compelling case in the 7-seater MPV segment. But honestly, the GLS variant that costs 90,000 pesos less offers better value for money, and you only get it without the ADAS features. Hyundai Motor Philippines sources this one from Indonesia, and they already said it themselves, this one doesn't have any unit issues at all. So, you don't have to wait too long to drive one. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. This is Jamil Lacuna of AutoIndustria.com.